This is lesson 8 in our series looking at data storage, particularly in numbers. Today we're looking at what is hexadecimal and how can hexadecimal be converted from binary to denary. You should leave today's lesson knowing what hexadecimal is, what its purposes are and how to convert between hexadecimal and binary and denary. Here's our keyword wall. Have a look on our keyword wall. What is the difference between binary and denary? Well, hopefully you should know that denary has na uh, 10 different options, 0 to 9, whereas binary only has 2, 0 and 1. That means binary is base 2 and denary is base 10. Now, you might have seen hexadecimal codes before. Have a look at these two images. First of all, you've got colours. Each of the colours on the right hand side have hexadecimal codes. On the left hand side you can see a MAC address. We'll be learning about MAC addresses in the networking section. These, uses, these use hex codes as well. Please watch this video to give you a bit more idea about how hex codes are used. Now, as we've said already, hex codes are used for MAC addresses and we're going to be learning about these. This link is a colour palette where you can change the different colours and see the effect it has on the hexadecimal numbers. Now, we've already said binary has a character set of 2, 0 and 1, base 2. Denary has, or sometimes decimal, has a character set of 10, the numbers from 0 to 9. Any number can be made from a combination of those numbers. Well, hexadecimal has a character set of 16, 0 to 9, and then A, B, C, D, E, and F. It has 16 different possibilities. Please find this page in your workbook and tell me what the characters are in hex, and then examples of hex in real life. Please pause the video and answer these questions. So let's try counting in hex. We'd start with 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But rather than going to 10, we go A, B, C, D, E, F. But what comes next? Well, just like we do when we're counting in denary, once we reach 9, we put the first number in front of the first number. So that doesn't make sense, but we have 10. So we've reached 10 once. So we put 1, 0. 0 is the start of our sequence. We've reached all the way up to F once. So we put a 1 in front of it. So we count 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Remember we have some more characters here. 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E, 1F and we've counted to 16 twice now so we update our number on the front to a 2. We start with 0 remember so we count through the 20s when we get to 29 we go 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D, 2E, 2F then we'd go to 30. So what would come after this number? 99, 9A and AF. Please pause the video and try and write your answers. Now if we were using denary it would be 100 for question 1 but because we're using hexadecimal after 99 there is another character after 9 which is A so it would be 9A. So after 9A we'd expect 9B. Question 3 is a little bit different after AF well, F is the end of our sequence, so we need to update our value at the front. Now, after A is B, so we start with B0. We're going to play a hexadecimal game, and we'll do this in class. If you're not in class, you're not going to be able to do this. But what I want you to try and do is see if you can add an extra two rows to our binary number, so the 30s and the 40s. Please complete these two pages in your workbooks. Can you write all the numbers up to 30F? And then which values come next? Now, there are reasons why we use hexadecimal. The reasons are that, first of all, we know 
that when we use denary we use hundreds, tens, uh, thousands, etc. We know in binary we use 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. What well, if we have a three bits, right, three binary digits? Actually, if you look at this value here, for example, 101 would be 101. Well, the biggest number we could make would be 999. The biggest value we could make with three in binary would be 7. Whereas in hexadecimal, because our place values are much bigger, we can make much bigger numbers. Let's dig into this a little bit more. When we're using binary, we use base 2. So 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 to the 2 is 4. And we know there are four different options that we could make. With hexadecimal, 16 to the 2 is 256. And we have two different options. We can actually make 256 different values. And there's a star to them at the bottom. So we can make many more values. So the hexadecimal number has more options. So that means we can represent more data in the same amount of bits. So it uses less memory. Please add this onto your workbook, onto the part that says what are the advantages of hexadecimal. So do you recognise this number anyway, 256? You might have seen that number um, when you're looking at resolution of computers. Some computer screens have 256 colours. The next number in the binary sequence would be 256. So actually in binary, where we take nine placeholders or nine bits to reach 256, we can do that in just three in hexadecimal. It's actually much easier for us to learn than it is for us to learn binary. Well, it's obviously more ex uh, challenging to learn than denary because we know that already. But once we understand the denary system, we can learn hexadecimal. So it's much easier for us to understand than binary. So if you'd like to add that onto your second advantage for me, please, that's perfect. Now, the next part of our lesson is some extended reading. You've got two links. I want you to look at the links, figure out anything that you don't know, and add to your notes. Do that now, please, and pause the video. Next lesson, we're going to be looking at how to actually convert between binary and hexadecimal.